Hi, this is Meg with Case Fleet. This tutorial covers how to get started using Case Fleet. I'll cover key concepts and explain how to quickly navigate the key features in our application. I'll also go through a recommended workflow, which will start with uploading evidence, creating issues and contacts, then creating facts and generating work product. Through this video, you'll see how Case Fleet enables you to bring together all the building blocks of your case into an organized chronology of events that grows organically and is linked directly to supporting evidence. When you log into Case Fleet, you'll be taken to the dashboard page. If you're in a free trial, you'll notice there are three cards at the top of your screen. The first card provides a link to our sample case, as well as access to our setup guide and this video. The second card is where you would go to invite team members to join your free trial. The third card shows how many days are left in your free trial and includes a link to subscribe. If you're an existing customer of Case Fleet, your dashboard page will start with a list of recently accessed cases, as well as any upcoming and past due tasks to which you are assigned. To create a new case in Case Fleet, simply click the Create a Case button here. You can also create a new case from the Cases screen, accessible via the vertical menu on the left. Once I've given my case a name and saved it, I'll be taken to the Case homepage. Before we begin entering information for this case, let's do a quick overview of each of the case tabs. The case homepage, which is the page we're on now, provides a place to upload relevant documents to your case. It also shows a list of the most recent source documents added to your case and provides some statistics as you begin creating your chronology. The facts tab is where your case chronology will live. As you begin to analyze and pull information from your source documents, you'll create a relational database that is housed here. It will show the date and time, the fact along with any associated contacts, the issue or issue tags that are relevant to that fact, and the evidence that proves the fact. The Context tab is where you compile your cast of characters, for instance, the plaintiff, defendant, lay witnesses, and expert witnesses. The Issues tab is where you'll create tags to organize your facts. Sources is where all the documents or other files you upload into Case Fleet are kept. For standard and enterprise users, the Search tab provides a central place for finding text, not only across documents, but also across your facts, issue tags, tasks, contacts, and comments. The Task tab is a place to create tasks for yourself or others you're collaborating with on the case. And finally, the Reports tab is where you would create work product. After you create a new case in Case Fleet, our recommended workflow is to start setting up your case by uploading relevant case documents or sources of evidence, creating issue tags, adding the relevant contacts, then starting your document review. First, let's start by visiting the Sources tab, which is where I upload documents into Case Fleet, from which I'll later review the evidence and create facts for my chronology. The types of files you'll upload into Case Fleet are the relevant documents that help prove the theory of your case. You can upload files by dragging and dropping them into the Upload field here, or by using the Select Files button. There are two phases to uploading documents into Case Fleet. First, the initial upload of the document into your account, seen here. Upload speeds are dependent on how fast your internet connection is. The second step is processing, where Case Fleet prepares your file for our document reviewer. The processing portion works pretty quickly behind the scenes, and you can leave the screen and work on other tasks in Case Fleet without interrupting this process. While our documents are processing, let's work on adding the other building blocks of our case. Issues are tags we create to categorize and organize the facts in our chronology. In Case Fleet, there are two kinds of issue tags, claims and unassigned issues. Claims are groups of issue tags and typically correspond to the elements of what you're trying to prove or your causes of action. For example, if we're wanting to prove someone's negligence resulted in a slip and fall case, we would start by creating a claim of negligence. Under this heading, we would also want to create individual issue tags for each element, so duty, breach, causation, and damages. Note, you can also color code issue tags to differentiate them visually in your timeline. Unassigned issues are tags that don't fit cleanly into a specific claim category, but are ways that we still want to tag and organize our facts. You see here that I have an example of background, disputed, and material. Other unassigned issue tags that may be helpful could be key facts or maybe undisputed facts. Moving on to the Contacts tab, this is where you'll keep track of the cast of characters in your case. To create a new contact, you simply click on this button in the upper right. 
If it's a new contact who hasn't been added to Case Fleet before, you'll want to add their information here. I would add a first name and last name, and then I can add a contact role. This can be something simple like plaintiff, witness, or defendant, or I can get more specific and create customized roles, such as the company this person works for or whether they're a good or hostile witness. If I want to customize my contact roles for this case, I simply click on the Click to Edit Role button here and add a new contact role. You can see I've added one called Case Fleet Employee, which I'll now include here. To assign a contact to the case who already exists in Case Fleet, I would click the button at the top that says Select Existing. Then I'll be prompted to choose from any contact already existing in my Case Fleet account. After I've added issues and contacts to my case, I want to return to the Sources tab. Once your documents have completed processing, you'll click the Launch Reviewer button to open the document and start analyzing it and creating facts from it. Here's an example of a document opened in our Document Reviewer. The menu for the Document Reviewer runs across the top of the screen. Among other things, you can zoom and rotate your view, jump to a particular page in the document, download a copy of the original document to your computer, and edit information on the source record, including changing the name of the document in case fleet without altering the file name. You can also edit citation formatting here. For instance, if your document is stamped with a Bates number, you'll want to edit the citation format so the citation to the evidence is identified by the Bates number and not by the general page number. There's also a place to reprocess a page if needed and jump back and forth from one document to the next. For standard and enterprise accounts, our document review platform also includes full text search, which you access here. You can search for an exact phrase, find words in proximity to each other, as well as use Boolean and wildcard searches to find exactly what you're looking for. For example, if I want to find all instances of allergy, allergic, etc., I would type A-L-L-E-R-G with the asterisk wildcard and then click search. My search results will appear down here. I can click on the search result and it will take me to that location in the document. The Document Reviewer in Case Fleet is used to analyze your relevant source documents and create facts from those documents. There are three ways to create a fact from a document. The quickest and easiest way is to run your mouse over the text. You'll see that what you've highlighted appears in the fact box. If you'd like to link a contact to the fact, use the at symbol and a list of contacts from your case will appear. You can then add a date using one of these date options and a time if relevant. The pen site will appear, which indicates the page of the document the fact came from. Then finally, you can tag the fact with the relevant issue or issue tags that it relates to. The second way to create a fact in Case Fleet is by hitting the Cite Page button in the toolbar. You can see here I'm responsible for creating a summary of the fact when I hit Cite this page. This is most commonly used when you're citing a photograph, handwriting, or you would like to cite to the page as a whole, rather than highlighted text. The third way is by unchecking this box at the bottom of the fact form. When I do this, I'll highlight information and it will still be logged in the source text field, but I'm responsible for typing my own summary in the fact field. I've jumped to a case with more information in it in order to illustrate what a chronology looks like once you've created facts from your evidence, as well as to illustrate how the filters and reporting options work. Using filters in Case Fleet will allow you to more thoroughly and efficiently analyze your evidence. Filtering also provides a quick way to identify specific information in your case that you want to use for various purposes. When I click on the Filter button here, you'll see I have the option to quickly hide undated facts and filter my chronology by a specific time period. Below this, I have the ability to apply a series of other filters based on information in Case Fleet to narrow down my list of facts to specifically what I need. Facts can be filtered by related issues, claims, and contacts, the source they reference and any applied source tags, the date a fact was input into Case Fleet and by whom, by doing a word search of the fact text, and the presence of any internal comments on a fact. It's important to note that I can also stack my filters together to more precisely locate the information I'm looking for. For instance, if I would like to look at the issue tag of key facts as it relates to the contact of Lane Parish within the source of the Lane Parish statement, I simply input the information here. 
You can see I've quickly filtered my timeline or my chronology down to two facts from 79 facts. Once I've filtered my chronology, I have the option to save the results as a view to quickly reference at a later time. If I click the Generate Report button, the filters I've set on the Facts page will be carried over to the Reports tab. Now I can print a report in a variety of formats. We have seven report options to choose from currently, and the report will be filtered the way I have selected. Each report has a specific purpose. For instance, the Facts by Issues report will print a draft statement of facts, and the Contacts and Documents report will print a draft initial disclosures document. Printing a report in CaseFleet is easy. I simply select the report type I would like, click Generate, and then decide whether I would like to include a zip file of the related documents or source parentheticals. When I generate the report, it will appear at the bottom of the screen where I can download it to my desktop. Hopefully this tutorial has helped you get better acquainted with the basic functionality of CaseFleet. If you have questions, please email us at support at casefleet.com or message us in-app by clicking on the chat icon down here. If you're interested in learning more on a specific feature, please take a look at our other tutorials linked below. Thank you.